Hello friends, once again I will welcome all of you in our practical session of microwave waveguide test bench based on a rectangular waveguide. Our today's experiment is to identify and understand the characteristics of a circulator. In our previous practical we discussed about the isolator characteristics. So our today's experiment it is related with the circulator characteristics. So here you are observing a circulator block. Basically circulator block it is a three port device. So isolator it is a two port device but circulator uh, is a three port device. So three ports are there port 1, port 2 and here port 3 right. So in this experiment uh, we are going to calculate the insertion loss and isolation loss uh, for the circulator. So if we first of all let us have a look over the basic working principle of a circulator. So here you are observing a circulator uh, conceptual diagram. So it is basically a three port network as we already discussed. So three port circulator is there. So port 1, port 2 and port 3. Now when we give input to the port 1, the output is available at port 2, but it is not available at port 3. So we can say that port 1 and port 2 are coupled. So there is zero attenuation and whatever the energy we are giving at the port 1, it will get transferred to the port 2 in circular direction manner. But it is not available in port 3. In the similar way, if we are giving input to the port 2, then uh, the output it is available at port 3, but not at the port 1. So uh, whatever the signal propagation, it is in circular manner. So that's why the name given to this particular block it as a circulator. So uh, basically in this particular practical, uh, we are doing the same thing. Uh, first of all, uh, we are calculating or uh, finding out the reference voltage uh, before insertion of a circulator. So uh, I have already made up a setup uh, for the initial uh, condition reference voltage calculation. So uh, here you are observing a klistron power supply, then it is klistron mount, then klistron. So cooling fan is there, then I have connected the klistron to the isolator then isolator get connected to the uh, variable attenuator then variable attenuator is connected to the frequency meter frequency meter itself gets connected to the circulator and through the circulator finally it is a detector mount so i have given the output through the slotted section or slotted line uh, to the cro so this is the basic setup. Now my first aim is that I just want to calculate the reference voltage uh, before insertion of this circulator. So that voltage I am taking as a V1 as a reference voltage and then once again I am doing the same procedure that I am inserting the circulator in the microwave test bench setup uh, just after uh, the frequency meter. And then once again I am taking the readings uh, to calculate the uh, insertion loss and isolation loss. So let us have a look over the uh, calculation procedure for the calculation of your reference voltage. So initially as per the diagram, so Clistron power supply, uh, it should be connected to the Clistron mount, Clistron mount connected to the isolator, then attenuator, then circulator and finally to the detector mount we are taking the output on CRO right. So let us start the procedure. So at the initial condition I will put this meter select knob on voltage right then whatever the modulation knob itself it is kept on AM right. Now the beam voltage knob it should be fully anti-clockwise then repeller voltage knob it should be clockwise then frequency and amplitude knob at the center position right and through the connector 
the Clishton power supply is connected to the Clishton. Now exactly behind the Clishton there is cooling fan uh, to cool your Clishton tube because uh, during uh, the microwave generation process as Clishton is the source uh, the heat will be generated and uh, this additional heat generated may be harmful for the Clishton device so that's why we want to cool that particular Clishton device so cooling fan is there right. Uh, we are keeping variable attenuator at extreme outside position that is uh, zero attenuation position. So uh, the knob it will be kept at the complete upward side. If we move it in downward side then the attenuation of the signal itself gets increased. So maximum attenuation will be available at extreme downward position. So I am just keeping this variable attenuation knob to extreme outside position for getting uh, zero attenuation then I am rotating the frequency meter at one side right then slotted line section it is connected and through the slotted line section I am giving output to the CRO right. Now here you are observing the voltage selection then beam voltage knob fully anti-clockwise direction repeller voltage now fully clockwise direction and modulation technique we have selected it is AM right. Now let us start your experiment. So I have switched on the Clishton power supply so at initial condition the beam voltage it is 201 which is acceptable. Then I will increase the beam voltage up to 300 volt so as to respond your Clistron properly. Yes, so here I have increased the beam voltage up to 300 volt. So after increasing the voltage up to 300 volt, I will wait for one or two minutes. Uh, so as for this particular voltage, your Clistron get respond and uh, the microwaves are generated and uh, we are very much capable to uh, get a output as a square wave on the CRO. So we will wait for one or two minutes. So before mean this while let us have a look over the circulator block. So here it is port 1 then port 2 and port 3. So if I am giving input to the port 1 uh, they, we will get output at port 2 and there will be no output at port 3. So in circular manner uh, the circulator uh, energy gets propagated. Similarly if we give input to the port 2 then output will be available at port 3, no output will be available at port 1. Similarly if we give input to the port 3 output will be available at port 1, no output will be available at port 2. So in technical language we can say that. Uh, there is minimum or zero attenuation for the signal flow from port 1 to the port 2 but there is highest attenuation for signal flowing from your port 1 to the port 3. So if we are giving input to the port 1 right the output will be available at port 2 no output will be available at port 3. So this is the basic setup. So we have wait for uh, one minute now I will reduce the beam voltage up to 265 volt so Okay, so to just a minute, so 267 it is also acceptable range, right. Now the next step what I am doing, I am just changing the repeller voltage so that the square wave will be observed on your CRO. So before changing the repeller voltage, let us have a look over the beam current. It should not be increased more than that of 
30 milli ampere so we are observing here 17 milli ampere beam current then I will change the repeller voltage knob to the uh, meter select knob to the repeller voltage so here you are observing minus 274 volt now I am changing the repeller voltage so as to get a square wave on your CRO yes so dear students here you are observing a square wave on the CRO now I am changing the amplitude knob so as to get maximum amplitude of square wave right also with the help of slotted line section I am changing or moving this slotted line in one direction so that the maximum amplitude point itself it get reached so here you are observing a maximum point right so yes so here you are observing a square wave now we will take the reading so 1 2 3 3.8 multiplied by 0.2 volt so I am taking this reading as a reference voltage so before insertion of a circulator so reference voltage V1 is equal to 3.8 multiplied by 0.2 right so it is 0.76 volt so it is your reference voltage v1 now our next step is that now we are inserting this circulator block just after the frequency meter here and once again I am taking the reading so whatever the steps I am doing is that I am giving input to the port 1 and I am taking output at port 2 and port 3 itself gets terminated with the match termination right. So with the help of this I will get insertion loss of a circulator. So I am giving input to port 1 observing output at port 2 and your port 3 is terminated for the first calculation of insertion loss then in the next step what I am doing I am giving input to port 1 now in the second step terminating your port 2 and then I am observing output at port 3 so it will give me the isolation loss so before calculating the isolation loss first of all let us do the procedure of calculation of insertion loss so give input to your port number 1 and observe the output at port 2 terminate your port number 3 so I will connect this circulator just after the frequency meter here in your microwave test bench yes now I have connected this circulator to this test bench so cliston supply connected to the cliston then through the cliston mount it is connected to the isolator through a isolator then connected to the variable attenuator variable attenuator connected to the frequency meter now the port one of the circulator i have connected to the input so to the source side so whatever the microwave energy generated with the help of cliston power supply it will be given to the port 1 of the circulator and I am taking output at port 2 so in circular manner this particular energy flows from port 1 to the port 2 so the output we are observing at port 2 so through this particular slotted line section detector mount I have connected the output to the CRO here you are observing a square wave on the CRO right now to observe this particular square wave 
uh, when I have done this particular connection circulator, I have repeated the same procedure uh, that beam voltage fully anti-clockwise, then repeller voltage fully clockwise, then increase beam voltage up to 300 volt. So as your cliston itself gets respond, then uh, uh, I have changed the repeller voltage uh, so that a proper square wave will be observed. So you are observing here a square wave. Now we will take the reading. So here if you observe it is 0.4 multiplied by 0.2. So I am taking this reading as a V2. So V2 is nothing but the reading or the output voltage reading when input is given to the port 1 of a circulator and we, ha we are going to measure the output at port 2 of a circulator and we have terminated port 3 through the match termination. So here you are observing a port 3 itself gets terminated with the help of match termination. So whatever the reading we have observed or voltage we have observed on the CRO it is nothing but your V2. So V2 is nothing but 0.4 multiplied by 0.2. So it is 0 0.08 volt, right? So 0.4 multiplied by 0 0.2, it is 0 0.08 volt. So it is nothing but V2, right? Now. Uh, here you are observing a formula for the insertion loss. So insertion loss is nothing but equal to 20 log of V2 by V1 in dB. So V2 is nothing but whatever the reading we have taken at port 2 of a circulator. And V1 is nothing but the reference voltage that we have measured before insertion of circulator. So uh, if we put the value of V2 as a 0.08, if we put the value of V1 that is 0.76 volt, we can easily calculate the insertion loss. So whatever the loss in the microwave energy we observed after insertion of your circulator. So I will repeat once again. So here we have inserted, here we have inserted a circulator over here, right. So port 1 we, are, we have given input to your port 1 then we have taken output at port 2 and your port 3 itself it is terminated right so this is nothing but the experimental setup for calculation of insertion loss of a circulator now we want to observe the uh, isolation loss or isolation so if we are giving input to your port number 1 right so what should be the output at port number 3 so how port 3 itself gets isolated with the help of your port 1 so that we want to observe so i am just disconnecting the this circulator once again and now i am taking output at port 3 and terminating your port 2 so just wait for a minute yes so dear students once again i have just adjusted the settings now here you are observing that uh, to the port 3 I have given the connection of your slotted line section and taken the output right and I have terminated the port 2 so whatever the output here I am observing it is very very less so it is 0 0.2 multiplied by 20 millivolt right so I am taking this reading as a uh, reading for V3 that is uh, isolation so I will note down it so the connection setting is that input given to port 1 output we are observing to port 3 and termination match termination it is given to your port 2 so your port 2 it is terminated so whatever the output we are observed here it is v3 which is equal to 0.2 multiplied by 
ट्वेंटी मिली वोल्ट सो ट्वेंटी मिली वोल्ट सो टू इंटू टेन डेज टू पावर माइनस वन राइट मल्टीप्लाइड बाय ट्वेंटी इंटू टेन डेज टू पावर माइनस थ्री सो इट बिकम्स फोर्टी इंटू टेन डेज टू पावर माइनस फोर और वी कैन ऑल्सो से दैट इट इज फोर मिली वोल्ट so whatever the output i am observing here it is 4 millivolt right so it is very much minimum to that that of your input so your input it is 0.76 volt and you are observing output in millivolt so complete isolation is provided right so no signal will be transferred or minimum signal will be transferred to the port 3 if we have given input to your port 2 now there is formula for calculation of your isolation loss so isolation loss it is 20 log of v3 by v1 so v3 is nothing but the reading what we have taken at port 3 v1 is the reference voltage without insertion of circulator so just by putting the value of v3 as 4 millivolt and v1 as 0.76 volt we can easily calculate the isolation loss so this is nothing but uh, the experimental setup for the circulator the same procedure we can repeat uh, if we give input to the port 2 what is the output at port 3 uh, if we give input to the port 3 what is the output at port 1 etc so uh, for meanwhile we have taken only one case uh, that given input to the port 1 so calculate for the calculation of your insertion loss first of all take the output at port 2 and for the calculation of uh, your isolation loss take the output at port 3 so when we are taking output at port 2 terminate your port 3 and we will take output at port 3 terminate your port 2 but whatever the input port it is fixed that is port 1 right so hope all of you understood uh, the concept of circulator so we will stop here so thank you thank you very much